Well, now Martin Kemp is sharing some of his favourite moments from an incredible career, and he joins us now to explain more. Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Great to see you. 25 million records, and it all went on the rider. <laughs> well, All the money so. was spent on the rider. It was <laughs> often the case. <laughs> Worth it, though. But yeah. great time. I'm glad we did. Yeah. We had some fun times, and they're all documented here in yeah. this book. Here it is, Ticket to the World, My 80s Story. And there'll be lots of people that will remember this time and get a real insight in this, but there'll be a lot of people that won't remember it, that you'll be able to introduce to them what the 80s it's was like. exactly why I wanted to write it. You know, it was, it was to take people back there that had been there, because we all look at the 80s with kind of rose-tinted glasses in a way, you know. Uh, but there were also lots of young kids that yeah. all talk about it, so I wanted to take them back on a journey. Yeah. But it's called My Story, but really it's everybody's story, you know. It's kind of all of our 80s. You know, what I try to do is use myself as a vehicle to take you through the 80s mm. so that you can remember it. Yeah, I, I um, was a 17-year-old bookings clerk at the BBC and I went out to get some lunch and walked past the Crown and Scepter pub and you guys were all out there in all your gear. It's like, oh my God, it's <laughs> and our ballet. Well, we most probably just did Top of the Pops, yeah, right, probably. in this building. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing, yeah. is that this building means a lot to you, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it's amazing because, you know, when I walked down these corridors, mm, this was kind of where Top of the Pops was. And it was the only time in those days that you ever bumped into any other band. Because, like, uh, the festivals and stuff that we have nowadays, yeah. where all bands get together, they didn't exist in those days. It was, the festivals was only for the realm of heavy rock. Huh? Yeah. You know, so Ozzy Osbourne, Iron Maiden. But so young bands in, in the charts only ever used to see each other in this building. Explain the importance of the Blitz Club. Oh, the Blitz was everything. You know, I tried to get it across in the book, is that the Blitz happened in 1980. It was by Steve Strange used to run the Blitz um, from Visage, but it only happened every Tuesday night. It was in Covent Garden, probably only like 120 people in there. But so much of the 80s come from the Blitz. Like, uh, the charts were filled with people that just used to hang out in the Blitz, like Spandau and Boy George, mm. Ultravox, Sade, Bananarama, and the list goes on God, and on amazing. and on. And it wasn't just people in, in uh, bands, it was fashion designers, it was uh, art designers, it was everybody. So if you were in a band and you made it big in, in that club, you could choose from anything. You had graphic designers that would make your record covers. You had people that would shoot your videos. And it was all inside these 120 people. And what I tried to get across in the book was that um, it, these guys, these 120 people that turned up every Tuesday night with Steve Strange kind of shaped the way the 80s went. Do you, do you feel like writing it now, retrospectively, you can be more honest? And if had you have written yeah. a book about the 80s nearer to the time, yeah. it would have been a harder book to write. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you're younger, you're filled with kind of like spanned out propaganda in a way. You know, you have to make it look kind of good when you write stuff. But when you get to my age, you know, when you're like 61 now, you know, I look back at it and I can be completely honest mm. about everything and I can see the rights and wrongs of it all mm -hmm. as well, which is really nice and refreshing to be able to write it in that way. Mm -hmm. You, um, I mean, you mentioned people obviously from the Blitz, mm. uh, uh, George, uh, who I think was in the sort of coat check area, wasn't he? Oh, listen, the first time I saw Boy George, I was up on stage in the Blitz playing uh, Spandau's very first gig, and I looked down to my left, and he is in the coat check. He is the guy that is taking the coats. And what was he like? Was he shy and retiring, a small flower? <laughs> I was absolutely <laughs> terrified of him when I was a kid. Really? He had a tongue that could lash you from a, a thousand yards. Uh, but now, you know, he's a lovely guy. And, uh, you know, I was watching him recently in the jungle. Yeah. Uh, and I think he did himself <laughs> proud in a way, you know? Yeah, no, I you think, think he, he had to hold himself back. I, I thought he was honest. Yeah. yeah. You know, you see lots of the other guys on those shows and everybody kind of does the old propaganda thing, yeah. you know, make myself look a little bit better. But George was, he was open yeah, and he was free. He had no makeup on, he was just himself. And I, I thought that was true. Um, obviously, uh, the 80s, another very important time in your life because it was during the 80s watching Top of the Pops that you first saw the love of your life. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Shirley, yeah, first time I ever saw her. Um, I was around my mum and dad's house and it was Thursday night and I put Top of the Pops on and I sit on the, I sit on the floor up against the arm of the sofa, you know, watching the show. And wham, come on. 
doing Young Guns. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely fall in love with Shirley through the television. And listen, we're still together now. So, I know. So, so, how, so uh, how did the number handing over go? Oh, it went not too well, to be honest. Well, when I see Shirley about two weeks later, I give her my number and she... I said to call me, but she didn't call me for about three weeks. Kept you waiting. No, I, I think it was because I had too much makeup on at the uh, time. Because oh, no. it was the early, it was 1982. Yeah. 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 And uh, she didn't call me. And then three weeks later, Shirley tells the story that she is around George Michael's house, mm. her best friend at school. Cool. And uh, George said, You've got to call him. And dials the number and hands her the receiver. So it was him that put us together. That's Amazing. the coolest story ever. <laughs> that is so cool. And actually, you were, I mean, you could have kind of fallen into that trap of having a very sort of showbiz kind of romance mm. and lifestyle. But I love that story that, you know, you'd, you'd finished doing Live Aid and you could have partied with the greats, you know, yeah. Freddie Mercury, all those people. But you and her, you went back to her house and yeah. got into bed and watched it on the telly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, at the time, you've got to remember, Shirley was touring with Wham. Yeah. And uh, Spandau were tour tour on tour in Europe. And so we had this day off to come back to Live Aid, to, uh, and a great excuse to come back to London. Yeah. And it, i just met Shirley at Live Aid, the first time I'd seen her for weeks, and we said, you know what, let's get out of here. So we go back to uh, the flat, and we lie in bed, and we watch most of Live Aid <laughs> from our, like, very small bed at the time. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, I think I, I got up about five o'clock, and I went back to Wembley, where I was just in time to see Queen. Uh -huh. Which uh, was a lovely memory. There was um, there was a bit of partying though. Um, yep. uh, it has to be said. Um, uh, what about? Uh, there was a lot to be about, honest. Yeah. You know. What about Ibiza? Uh, 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 well, Ibiza was. Ibiza was the first time Spandau played in Ibiza. It was the first summer of love. Yeah. So it was kicking off everywhere, right? Uh, and uh, I remember being completely. Everybody was worse for wear here. And it was the Koo Club, right? The old Koo Club. And it had a sw big swimming pool in the middle of the club. It was outdoors. First outdoor club ever invented. Uh, and at the end of the evening, everybody is, like, like I say, worse for wear. And they release a ball. And a ball is chasing Not everybody. a bouncy ball. No, an actual ball. animal ball. Yeah, with horns and everything. Why? Uh, why not? It was Ibiza. What colour? Only in the eighties. Yeah. What it's... colour were you wearing? Uh, yeah, red. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a kind of red Robin Hood outfit. I think I was wearing at the time. Well, you live to tell the tale. Yeah. They're all written down in here. Um, it's yeah. really lovely to see you. Happy it's New Year to you and yours. And to um, you. Ticket to the World by 80s, and there it is. Thank you. Thank great, you so great much. Great to see you. Thank you.